Hello, welcome to Revelator John. Um, just uh, post another video just to talk about a couple of things that I'm doing at the moment and also looking forward uh, to uh, the weekend. Um, so, busy weekend of uh, domestic stuff but also of uh, football. Um, so, West Ham uh, away to Huddersfield, 3 o'clock kickoff Saturday. Uh, interesting to see, uh, or will be interesting to see uh, what team uh, Moyes uh, starts with, and, and especially for me, most importantly, what uh, what tactics is he uh, going to employ? Um, because we are we are lacking that creative forward drive. Um, we've, you know, and he, you know, Moyes openly admits this that, you know, defensively we've, you know, shored it up a little bit. Yeah, still suspect in a lot of areas, still um, not really performing at our best in a consistent manner. However, it is a vast improvement for what it was before. Um, but our main issue is our midfield and, or certainly central midfield, and then also providing that sort of service up to uh, the strikers. Um, Lots of transfer talk at the moment, lots of transfer rumours at the moment. We're also plagued with some uh, injuries at the moment. Some players were hoping that will return back this weekend for the game. Uh, if not for the um, cup replay against Shrewsbury on Tuesday uh, or next weekend uh, in, in the next uh, game. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, a lot of the formation that uh, Moyes can go with, uh, a lot of the selection is based upon the, obviously the selection uh, of the players which are fit, which aren't fit. But in an ideal sense, um, I, I think if we're gonna if we're gonna look at the next five games, these next five games are really important for our league position, but also to carry us forward and through to the to the end of the season. One of the big things they got to consider is that these five games are against teams that are in and around our position. Um, they're not top six uh, signs. They are you know lower down the lower down the division. So we need to be able to not only um, dominate these games, but dominate in terms of possession, uh, performance, but hopefully we'll get a result against them. I'm more concerned with the performance against these teams rather than the actual result, although the result obviously is really important and I want us to win every match and yeah, at least come away with a draw and certainly not lose any game. So the big thing is, or well, the big question is, does Moyes change the tactics completely for these next five games or does he carry on with much of the same but just introduce or inject a much more attacking option? Many people are talking about uh, let's swap back to a uh, 4-4-2 or a 4-5-1 um, uh, setup. Um, uh, or whether we continue as 3-5 and then either a 1-1 one, one or a 3-5-2 um, formation. I would actually think that a 4-4-2 for us would actually work quite well against these other teams. However, what I am saying is that in this case, in these next five games, I think we have to abandon that. I think we have to look keep this 3-5... Uh, I think a 3-5-2... Uh, combination uh, formation is probably our best bet and I think only because the three and the five will just enable us to maintain a continuity of the games that we've already played if we start changing tactics and dramatically go to a 4-4-2 then I think we'll lose our way a little bit I think the players are still on that teetering edge or whether they will you know push on and start overperforming or performing to what with the level that we would expect them to perform or start really really underperforming we still got a lot of players that are underperforming on a, on a regular basis or performing inconsistently um, we're still being plagued by injuries we we've got strikers that just either not performing or just not getting the service or not getting a chance to shine um, we haven't transfer rumors um, and players being linked to either coming or going that I think is, is a good chance that will upset the cat, uh, apple cart a little bit and um, might distract us from you know what we need to do. Um, so I'd certainly start with three at the back. Um, 
Not sure if Reed is playing. I don't think he's been that great the last few games. I think he's been carrying injury. I think he's been. Uh, I think he might be fatigue has been set up to come in as well. If Collins can come back in, I, I would put Collins or Bonner. Um, and if if Cres, this is the other thing. If Creswell uh, is back in, I'd have Creswell there. If not, then. Um, then Rice, Rice did a great job at left back, you know, um, against Shrewsbury. I, it's, it's a difficult one. Um, one of the players I think is possibly the the most underperforming at the moment is Czech Kyoto. Now, I if if it was me, I wouldn't have him anywhere near the first team at the moment. So I think. Something is not right there. Something his performance is way down, but it's just his whole attitude, um, his uh, body language, his uh, fight is not there. It's um, so the whole level of performance. I will always accept somebody who is underperforming, who's having a bad game. Okay. Um, obviously, if they're continued bad games, then you've got to question what's going on. But I, what I won't accept. I won't accept anybody or any player who doesn't even try. And I get the impression with, with Kayate that he's just not trying. Or, or certainly in lots of periods of the, 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 um, the games, he's just not trying. He's strolling back. The opposition players are running past him and he's just not even reacting to it. So I think that is the big thing. I think him and Obiang in the middle are just not a good partnership. They sh they must not never play with each other ever again. Um, but but if we've got a real problem in defence, then Coyote is one of those players who can we can slot back into a defensive role wherever it might be across the back line. And he might be able to shore things up. Whether he starts in the back three... Possibly not. I possibly might keep him on the bench just to come into that back three if required. Um, so there's my back three. Again, really depending on uh, fitness and injuries. But, um, you know, uh, certainly uh, Bonner, who I think has had a, some really good games. He's got a bit of a Italian renaissance coming on, which I quite like. Um, you know, so he's starting to play well, uh, starting to put some vital tackles in, and he's starting to be more of a player that you would think has got an international pedigree. You know, he's uh, so you know I quite like him. You know, so Collins, uh, Bonner, and Creswell, if possible. But you know, um, a Rice or Coyote, you know, to fill in spots there if they have to. Okay, central midfield, uh, Lanzini uh, in the centre at the top of a triangle. Okay. If Noble can come in, I want uh, Noble, uh, and then I want Josh Cullen back in, in there. I want him to support Lanzini in a kind of um, creative way. Noble, I want to also have that creativity, that linchpin uh, for, for the whole team, that leader in the park. But he can also organise a sword. He can also organise Cullen to um, not forget any of his um, defensive duties. So left and right, I would go for uh, Masawaku and uh, Zabaleta. I still think Zabaleta is, um, we might be pushing him too much in terms of the games played for his age and what we're expecting him to do. But certainly as the first half, certainly as a starter, I would go with Zabaleta and encourage him to have high, high energy and get up and down that, that uh, wing. Same for Masawaka. Let's encourage these creative, any creative players to to express themselves, you know, and, and show us what you know it can be done. Um, so you know that's what I would have. So Masawaka left, um, Zabalot, Zabalot, <laughs> right, and uh, Lanzini, Cullen, and Noble in the middle. Okay, all this depends on the fitness, and all depends on um, team selection. I wouldn't have Obiang in there. Right now, um, if there's an issue with Cullen, then I would have Noble Obiang as a, as a partnership. But I, what, what I want to try and do with this uh, formation, this 3-5-2 formation, is, is inject a bit of creativity for these next games to get us to push forward. Because our main problem is that link-up play from defence, going to midfield and then going into the forward play. We are struggling. We are really struggling with effective passing, passing and moving. Um, having a bit of uh, flair and drive to move forward and we're, we're resorting back to you know league two 
you know, and I'm probably being playing a disservice to League Two football here, but you know, pumping the ball forward, you know, this is like school boy, school boy stuff. You know, twelve year olds just want to pump the ball forward, um, and you know, long balls are are great and they're great tactically if you're putting them the long ball into space or playing a diagonal. But pumping up the ball twelve o'clock into you know into um, you know strikers who are heavily marked, it just doesn't work. You know, it's just not working. Um, so um, that three, then that five, and then the two up front. An Altovich, I would. It's not. It's not strictly a striker, but an Altovich, I think you know, might be there. If not an Altovich, then I don't have Carroll, and I want either one of those two. And I, and I I say either of those two because I'm not 100% sure on an out of his fitness. They say he's coming back, but we'll see. Same with Carroll. Can they play a half each? Can they? You know, can we just bring them back uh, in gradually? But I want either of those to play as a two with Chicharito, and I think Chicharito, um, you know, Hernandez has had a raw deal uh, since being with West Ham. A raw deal in the last few weeks. I think. His 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 confidence is low. His head is down. Um, he may even be uh, being linked to other clubs leaving you now or in the summer. Let's talk about new franchise in the MLS, um, Los Angeles FC or whatever they want to call themselves. I hear today Man United even want to might even come back in for him. Um, so there's lots to talk about Chicharito. And I always ask this question: If other teams, especially better teams, are, are looking at um, our, our players and they think they can use them, then why can't we? The problem is, and Moyes freely admits this, that the, the problem with our uh, strikers is not them as individuals, it's the delivery and service that they're getting. And I think, I'm absolutely convinced that if Chicharito gets the service that he requires and is also allowed to, you know, be that poacher in the box, he will start scoring again. We have to get lots of action in the box and we're just not doing it and we haven't done it for a long time as well. Regardless of the results that we've had, regardless of the heroic defensive performances, overall, since Moyes has come back, he hasn't been able to crack that nut. He hasn't been able to get our players to really attack, um, you know, with uh, any kind of ambition and and confidence. You know, you know, we've either stumbled over the line, we've kind of we've we've got goals. You know, um, against uh, sorry against um, Stoke, we got three goals, but overall performance was great. But it could have been so much better in terms of offensive play um, against Newcastle. We lost three two. You know, we were sh you the first five minutes. Well, oh, Anatovic has scored. Great, we're going to boss this game, and then it all fell apart um, and didn't quite work. So, uh, sorry, not Southampton. Uh, Bournemouth. Bournemouth was another game. You know, we um, drew three all, and you think, well, that's not a bad point away, but. Our performance on the day, you know, Bournemouth were a lot better than us. They played better football. Um, yes, we should have won the game in terms of, you know, their equaliser that shouldn't have been allowed. Uh, there was a disgraceful uh, decision. But regardless, you know, it's the performance that's, that's the, the key thing here. I think if Moyes can crack this, this, these, this tactics, get a tactics that works well with the players that we have, I think we can actually get back to a better passing game, uh, better forward uh, attacking game, um, and also be solid about the holy grail, in my opinion, of of football. You know, proper football, solid at the back. You know, creative in midfield, and you know, you know, f f um, potent up, up front as well. And uh, I think if we can get that, you know, whether we're under the cosh, whether we're under a lot of pressure, now whether we play, you know, a, a fluid counter-attacking style or whether we are on the offensive, I think, you know, that key to, you know, um, packing that midfield out with some, with some um, 
guile, with some creativity, but with some leadership in there and with a bit of resilience, that will protect our back three um, and that will also provide the service to the front um, two or the one one, whichever, however we want to play this, um, th that they so desperately need, you know. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can do it. Uh, I think it's going to be a struggle against uh, Huddersfield. Um, I think, you know, in, I think it might even be a draw, this one. I'm hoping if he plays the tactics that I want him to play and the players perform, because it's a big thing. As soon as those players cross the white line, you, you know, they've got to take the direction from the touchline, but essentially they've got to perform. And if they're not performing, you know, it's not going to work. But if the players perform, if the tactics are right, if the Moyes tactics can be adaptable and he can quickly change things if, he, if it's not quite working out, bring somebody off the bench, you know, let's maybe inject a bit of youth there as well. Somebody who's got that um, that passion, um, that drive to want to impress and, you know, whatever, will accept their naivety a little bit. But just somebody who wants to wear the shirt, who wants to play for us, who wants to really, you know, give it all. You know, just for, just for sure, and I think we can we can get a two one result against Huddersfield, um, but we've got to be careful with them. We've got to be careful because they're no mugs either, um, and the league position would suggest that um, inconsistent. Yes, they have been, but I think they've got a good manager. I think they've got a good set of solid professionals, not out not outstanding, but solid professionals, and I think they're overachieving in the premiership this year so far um, and we are so underachieving so anyway that's uh, my uh, uh, little look forward to this uh, weekend but anyway so um, you can follow me on twitter uh, Alf Gasparo or at Alf Gasparo uh, just my real name there um, I'm also starting to write uh, a column or a couple of columns for uh, more than just a club uh, you can see the links on my uh, Twitter feed or uh, find them on Twitter as well or uh, on their website. Um, so there's already three out this week. There'll be another three or four out next week as well. I write in a couple of regular columns. Uh, one is my rhubarb grumble, uh, which is my... my uh, my take, if you like, uh, on the negative aspects of uh, West Ham, our club and our players and everything that's around it. And then there'll be another one, kind of a uh, the hammer's optimist, if you like, uh, looking at the, the better things, uh, the nicer things, or the, the things that give us confidence about our, our great club and team and so on and so forth. So uh, hopefully you like my style. Hopefully you like... Uh, um, a lot of the uh, the humour that I try and uh, bring to it, and uh, it's a very specific style that I have. Um, so I bring a lot of that from when I used to write for motorcycle magazines, and I used to write motorcycle columns as well, uh, which is obviously my other great uh, big passion. Uh, but anyway, so enjoy, and uh, hopefully we'll win this uh, weekend. So up the hammers, cheers.